Hello everyone, the Nord Medic here. I believe you remember this diagram on the left hand side from the video 1 of Neuroanatomy and Neurophysiology. Now, in this video, the part 2, we will learn about the basic concepts of grey matter, cortex, nucleus and ganglion. So, this left hand side diagram that we already know, if we look at the brain from a different aspect, that means if we cut the brain and look from the brain, look at the brain from the front side, what we will get to see? We will get to see our same old friend that is cerebellum over here. We will get to see the midbrain over here. We will see pawns. We will see medulla oblongata. And we will see the cerebellum. Right. Now, in this diagram, I believe you can appreciate that brain generally looks like a creamy yellow color. But the color is not uniform. At some places, the color is very light, whereas at other places, the color is a bit dark. Now, if I show you an original, original picture of a cross-section of a brain, which resembles this one, you will be able to better appreciate. This is an original picture of a cadaveric brain where you can see there are certain areas like this area where the color is light but whereas this area the color is a bit dark. So this darker places are known as the grey matter and these lighter places are known as white matter. Now why certain areas appear dark and certain areas appear white? For that we have to understand at a cellular level. At a cellular level, if we try to learn neuroanatomy, we have to know that the functional and structural unit of nervous system is a neuron. Right. Now, most of the neurons in human body, except a few exceptions, have myelination. This is known as myelination. Now, this myelination appears a bit whiter or lighter in color than the color of the cell body or dendrites or axonal terminals, right? Now, this is the reason that this myelination part appears lighter and the rest of the part appears darker. This darker and lighter color difference creates the color difference on a macroscopic level. The neurons, the cell body and dendrons remain in the gray matter area and the axon remains in the white matter. Axon remains in the white matter and cell body and dendrons remain in the grey matter area. This is how the brain is arranged. If we try to understand grey matter, grey matter is nothing but collection of neuronal cell bodies. Whereas white matter is collection of axons. Now, let's discuss about grey matter in a bit more detail. About white matter we will see in the next video. Now grey matter, as you can see in this diagram, that some grey matter is on the surface Whereas some other gray matters are in the deep within the brain matter. So the gray matter that remains on the surface is known as the cortex or cortical gray matter. Whereas the gray matter that remains with buried within the white matter of the brain is known as nucleus. So what is nucleus? Nucleus is gray matter surrounded by a layer of white matter. So it's gray matter surrounded by white matter right now nucleus is basically collection of cell bodies since it's a gray matter right cortex is also similarly collection of cell bodies it's a gray matter but the collection of cell bodies outside the central nervous system in the peripheral nervous system is known as ganglion now if we see closely we will see that in a section of spinal cord the nerves that leave the spinal cord they have something known as a dorsal root ganglion Ganglion is nothing but collection of cell bodies outside the central nervous system. So over here you can see that there are neurons which have their axons in the nerves and nerve roots but the cell bodies are present within this swelling which is known as the dorsal root ganglion. So remember that the collection of cell bodies within the central nervous system are known as either cortex or nucleus and outside the central nervous system it is known as a ganglion. 
in this connection i think i should tell you another thing that in case of a spinal cord as you can see in this section gray matter is inside and white matter is outside whereas in case of brain you can see that gray matter is outside and white matter is inside gray matter is also present inside but the amount of gray matter present inside is less but most of the gray matter is present outside on the surface that means the cortex is the predominant thing so i believe this summarizes our understanding of today's lecture that is gray matter what is gray matter and white matter and how they are related to neurons what is cortex what is nucleus and what is ganglion basically they are the three different types of gray matter that we have in our body in the next video we will learn about the white matter i hope you have understood this video well if you have understood this video please hit the like button share this video among your friends and peers of medical school and by any chance if you are new to this channel please hit the subscribe button press the bell icon and put the notification to all so that you never ever miss a video from my channel until then bye bye see you in the next one